He got hit with so many typicallys and uniques. Well, that's unique. We don't really see that very much. Yeah, typical or unique. Aiden was unique today, or there was right. something typical today. Oh, yes, that is very typical. We see it all the time. Oh, don't worry about it. That's typical. Oh, every child is unique, so we can't say what is typical. You know, that's typical. See you later. Mm -hmm. You know. We call it the typical unique conversation. Welcome back to Typically Unique. I'm Kim Aponte, and I'm here with my husband, Carlos. Hello. And today we're going to talk about camp quality. And um, camp quality is a special camp for um, children with uh, cancer and uh, their siblings. And <clears throat> Aiden and Carly both were invited to go to Camp Quality mm -hmm. uh, a, a few times. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I think this is a fabulous organization, uh, fabulous people. And Absolutely. we wanted to share our experience and put a spotlight yep. on Camp Quality itself. So Kim, yeah. what is camp quality and what's the history of it? Yeah, it was such a special experience mm -hmm. for the kids. So this camp was started in 1983 in Sydney, Australia um, by, um, I think she was an oncologist. Um, and it also got the name Camp Quality from a quote that an oncologist would use all the time saying that you know, your life, you, you can't um, do anything about the quantity of your life, but you can do something about the quality of your life. So these kids that have these, you know, severe medical issues that are life threatening, you know, and are sick all the time, this is a place to just let them have maximum fun and get some of that quality of life back after going through a horrible experience. So it started in Australia, and then this lady who started it shared it with other countries, and then it came to the United States, um, like in 1986. Um, so to me, that doesn't seem like that long, but <laughs> I guess it, it is a long time. Um, and there are 16 camps, I believe, around the country. So we're lucky to have one here in Ohio. Northeastern Ohio, yep. yeah. Yeah, it started in Missouri. Um, and we're going to show some photos so you'll see how many kids this impacts every year. They do it yearly. Um, so they have a summer camp for a week for the kids to go to. And they stay there. Um, overnight and they get a companion that is with them 24 7 because you know some of these kids are fragile and still have a lot of medical needs so there's an adult with them to um, take care of them and um, after that week they also get back together for reunions throughout the year because they're helping these kids also establish you know some friendships that they've we know that they've missed out on you know from being in the hospital and and um, all that time yeah so. they've been they've been secluded you know and mm -hmm. <clears throat> this is a good opportunity you know to have a group of people together who have special, requests needs oh, yeah. um you know there's nurses and i think you know a doctor or somebody on call there's you know trained um uh, advisors there i mean this is a very well run facility oh yes and um this particular camp was in the akron ohio area correct? Yep. Yep, in the Portage Lakes area down there. So there's a huge, beautiful lake, you know, wooded area, you know, campgrounds and, you know, everything they need for being outside all the time and, and having fun. So um, here on the screen, you can see their symbol up there. So whenever you see that, um, like that person with the stars coming out, um, that's the symbol for camp quality. And I found this map here that kind of gives you an idea of, of everything they have there and um, the cabins and everything and, um, you know, and how many kids this would impact. So they took a group photo up there. So all those kids for one week were together mm -hmm. at this camp. So it's so, amazing. Yeah. So let's back up a little bit. How did we, you know, I guess, first of all, how did we find out about camp quality? Um, I don't know if we heard about it through 
the hospital itself or, you mm-hmm. know, just through the grapevine somehow. Maybe someone did it previously. Well, Do you remember how we... We've talked out? about that child life specialist a lot um, up at the hospital. And part of her job was to connect parents and families with different resources. So, you know, that's how we found out about Make-A-Wish through her and Camp Quality and some other organizations, Super, Super Sibs that Carly mm-hmm. was a part of. So... Um, Yeah, that's how we found out about it. And you have to fill out huge forms, (laughs) you know, especially for the child that has the medical issues, you know, all the medications and everything. And check in once you got there was an ordeal, too. I mean, I I even think they took like their weight and like there was a nurse there and, you know, all the time. So my mind was at ease knowing that. You know, they had um, all these resources and people there to, yeah. to keep yeah. everybody safe. Not initially, but yeah, you got there. <laughs> as, <don't> <laughs> as, as, at ease as it could as be. As it could be, right. <laughs> but, um, you know, even previous to us getting there, you know, we ran this past date in and said, you know, hey, yeah. you know, we really want you to go to this camp quality. And he was having none of it. Yeah. He didn't want to do anything with that. And the other side of that is it gave Kim and I a week together Mm -hmm. without the kids. So that was kind of, you know, we were super motivated to to try to do that. You can see right here. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but uh, but Aiden wasn't, I think Carly was lukewarm uh, about it, but um, you know, Aiden wanted nothing to do with it. And um, we had actually talked to the director and said, look, you know, Aiden's gonna go because he's mandated to do so, right? It wasn't a, a will, he wasn't a willing participant, but Aiden's gonna go, but he really doesn't want to be there. And mm-hmm. the director kind of told us, "Well, I know who to put with Aiden. Yeah, I have the perfect person. I have the for perfect him. person because they will assign." An adult, the companion, a they companion, call him. Yep. yeah, with with each kid. So they were like, I know who I will have with Aiden. So and um, those people are volunteers. Yeah. So if you're, I think, eighteen or older, there were some college students there that just volunteer their week of time and mm-hmm. go there and have a blast. Um, yeah. So you could see uh, we're loaded up, ready to go. We we got the kids on their way. Um, and let me go here. Here's the companions. So um, there's, you can see Aiden with <laughs> yeah, let me, his let first me, let me, let me set Let me set up the companion first, though, because <laughs> so um, when they first arrived to um, Camp Quality, they would take an incoming photo, right? You know, so the very first day, stand with your companion. I don't know where that photo is, but this Aiden's companion there on the, the top left there was cheesy smile, kind of like he's got on yeah, his face he, right he's there. he's doing the same, but that's not, Aiden did not have that smile on his face the Not first at all. Day. He was just stoic. <laughs> he was mad. He was just standing there. He had some distance between them. There was like... Like, he, who is this guy? He was not looking forward to doing this at all. And, you know, we even pulled his companion aside and said, look, good luck. <laughs> You know, Aiden's a tough nut to crack sometimes, but... Call me if you need me. <laughs> yeah, call us if you need us. And and he was like, I got this. I got this. And we're like, eh, okay, we'll see. But um, Yeah, and we, we were telling him, you know, some of those, you know, little things that Aiden would like or not like, you know, like he, he really wasn't, he wouldn't drink water, you know, and that's all they were going to have there, basically, except at meals. So he's like, uh, you know, yeah. when he gets thirsty enough, he'll, he'll drink. drink. <laughs> yeah. When he gets thirsty, he'll drink. So, yeah. And I was like, huh, I don't know, man. This guy's made it, you know, 12, 13 years of his life without drinking water. I don't yeah, know how, but that's uh, why we were like, good luck. <laughs> but, uh, you know, Carly was excited to go. I think her hesitancy was going away from home uh, on her own for the first time. So I think that was um, where her hesitancy came from. But they were excited. Yeah. And and actually, um, both the kids um, were nervous going into this. But the companions really did a lot to make them feel at ease, like almost right away. Oh yeah. You know, that they just, 
very, very good. So and they get there early and prep. Like they they are ready for these kids mm-hmm. when and like you have to tell them about the child, you know, what their interests are and personalities and things. So they're really prepared. This is a class act place. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And here's just you know, every day they had jam packed, they have scheduled every day. They always have a theme for the camp. Um, every year and all the um, like pavilions like this they're in the art pavilion they have crafts every day for the kids to do different things Carly loved the word woodworking um, and that big field that's there uh, I mean when we dropped them off like their cabins were like up this big hill <laughs> and we're like lugging all this stuff that's like, right it was, it's and a really this, great place. The, I think the first year theme was movies, right? Or I think so. Something, uh, something to do with movies. Mm-hmm, so, like Hollywood or yeah, something. Exactly. Yep. And then one more thing about the, um, if you go back one, one more thing about the um, uh, companion, the top middle one, the next year that Aiden went. Yes. Um, Aiden was getting into, you know, or had been into like Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon and his companion, the next time that he went, he was into that too. Big time. Yeah. So he had stack of cards. They were making decks. Yeah. They came prepared. They came prepared. <laughs> so they, they played a lot of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh while they were there. Yep. And Carly just hit it off with all of her uh, companions as well. So yeah. And her companions are really good role models for her. They were college kids. And I think one was going, trying to become a dentist and Carly got a little bit interested in that for a while. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, they were, they were good matches. They but did good yeah, job. made really good connections with them. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you can just see just the smiles and the fun there. They had talent shows and, you know, singing nights and the school bus picture there. They even took all those kids, you know, the whole camp packed up, got on school buses and went to the zoo for the day. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty neat. And on the lake there, they had boats. They took the kids out on the boats. And there's Aiden smiling again. He got to drive the boat. So that was that was awesome. And, you know, and these pictures, a lot of them I got off of their Facebook page. They do have an official Facebook page um, with their information on there, too. And they really I felt like as many kids as were there that the camp director, which she was so special. Oh, yeah. She really, um, I felt, knew the families and knew our kids. And she would make sure that photos were taken of everybody. And whenever they could get Carly and Aiden together, they would. <laughs> yeah. And the top right one there was um, uh, an event outside of, actually the top right in the middle was an event outside of Camp Quality that we went to you know, a few months later where they got, you know, a bunch of folks together and we got to play some games and, um, you know, do some special things, but just another getaway for us to all get together and kind of hang out. So, right. Cause they do that throughout the year. Yeah, exactly. And you know, one of the reasons why I'm sure that they make sure they capture photos of the kids like that is because they know these kids are critically ill Yeah. and this, and these are very special times for them to be with their siblings. So that's, they know that it's important to capture that. So they even do a prom during the week and um, it, that's a pretty popular event too. They do one all on their own up in Cleveland, like a prom to remember or something for kids that <clears throat> are fighting cancer to give them that special night. But uh they get they bring in prom dresses even for these are kids of all ages like yep. like four or five six year olds um, you know all the way up to high school kids so they get the tuxes they put them in a limo they go off site I believe to a fancy hall and. Yeah. Aiden probably wasn't loving that tuxedo with uh, <laughs> that look on his face, but he did it, right? Uh-huh. You know, and he championed through. And I think he ultimately had a good time, but uh, yeah, them capturing him coming in. Yeah. Because they did a he true. He looks thrilled, but he looks really nice. Yeah, but they did a true red carpet photo shoot. You know, mm-hmm. as, as everybody came in. So, you know, they were like, strike a pose, you know, and he was like, eh, I'm just going to get inside here and, yeah. <laughs> and not do all that. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, you know, towards the end of the week, one of the last days, they will make sure that they have a special celebration um, for campers that, oh, I don't know if I can <laughs> talk about it without getting so sad, but, um, you know, campers that they've lost throughout the year. So they'll have a remembrance ceremony and they um, let kids talk. Um, the staff, the companions, the staff members will talk. Um, the, they invite the family members to come. Um, they make it a super special event. Um, it's very serious and sad, and you know they let off the balloons. Um, and they had um, the the I want to call them comfort animals. <laughs> mm -hmm. Show up for that too. So that's a very special thing that they do. You know and. I see it like they spent a week trying to laugh and have fun mm -hmm. and, you know, but the reality is always there, yeah. right? You know, especially with, you know, Carly made some really good friends with some people who did not make it, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we actually, if you can go back one, um, oh, yeah. Um, and we had a person from our hometown, um, that had not made it. Yeah. And their family was there. And even though this is a time to, you know, all get together and have fun and have a week, you know, to just be kids and do fun stuff. Um, it's still important. You know, there's an elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, these kids have to get off their chest and you have to ultimately talk about it you have to confront it in some way. Yeah. And I think this was a beautiful way mm -hmm. for them to have that sad moment. And it wasn't five minutes. It was a very long ceremony. Mm -hmm. You know, kids were hugging each other and people were crying and I was crying and you were crying and, you know, and it's, but it's important, I think, to still have that emotion you know, have that remembrance, you know, um, and let the kids be, let them know that it is okay to have those feelings and talk amongst each other about this, yeah. you know, and I think it was a beautiful way for them to do that. The kids had a chance to open up and then the next. So after that ceremony, um, these pictures are showing the kids, you know, all hugging each other. So it's it's that sad event, and then it's sad saying goodbye to each other, too. So, and, you know, that's um, in the me middle picture there. I made it the biggest one because that was Carly's um, special friend that she got to be at camp with for a couple of years. And uh, sadly, she um, lost her battle, too. So that's why these these events and these people that do this are so special. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, bittersweet, right? Looking back on this because, you know, Carly, you know, just looking at it from Carly's perspective, right? Because, you know, the, a lot of these pictures here are about Carly. But, um, you know, looking at it from her perspective, she was always on the outside of almost everything that was going on, right? Yeah. We kind of thrusted her and she thrusted herself right in the middle of all this, mm -hmm. you know, with all the fears and excitement and you know joy and you know being scared and not knowing um <clears throat> she just jumped right in made some friendships made some um you know i think connections that she hadn't made in yeah. this whole thing for for years you yeah know? it was just just as important if not you know just as important for her too. Yeah. Right. And that is the camp director up there that is giving me that giant hug because <laughs> she knows as yeah. a mom. Like, and I, I want to talk about her too because um, she's, we're still Facebook friends, right? Mm -hmm. I, I think she likes everything that we, we ultimately post and Carly and, um, you know, she was so fantastic. Um, running this, communicating with parents, dealing with all this, having those emotional swings of happiness and sadness and mm -hmm. comfort and joy. And I mean, she's a master at it. And, yeah. um, you very know, personable, oh. reaching out, you know, personally communicating with everybody. 
hopefully she's still involved in some way, you know, but um, yeah, she was mm-hmm. fantastic. I see her in the photo, all the photos. Oh, excellent. Um, so yeah, um, she was the director. Um, actually, Aiden's first companion that he had has stepped up and he has volunteered at that camp for like 20 some years. Wow. Like that's crazy. They're so dedicated, such dedicated people. That's awesome. <laughs> so camp ended and you know, you know, while the kids were away, we were like, oh, like a week to relax. And so we would go on, you know, little trips for ourselves. And it always happened to be over our anniversary weekend too. The week that they would go to camp would be our anniversary week. So we got to do something special. So that was always so nice. Which this and week then, is our anniversary yes, week. Happy happy anniversary. happy anniversary. 26 years. <laughs> 26 years. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is good timing, right? Because this is about the time of year that it would happen. Yeah. This is at Kalahari, which is a water park in Sandusky, Ohio. Yep, this is one of the reunions. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember, you know, I remember this because it was, um, you know, really great for the kids again to all hang out. They had one special room where yeah. all the kids could congregate. You know, because we all had our own own private room, right? But they had a special room where all the kids could come together and have snacks and talk and meet with friends and decide what they wanted to do that day. And I also remember um, mm-hmm. Troy Palamalu, who is a Hall of Fame defensive back for the Pittsburgh Steelers, was there at this time. And I remember Carly like totally like freaking out <laughs> about, you know, oh my God, there's a Pittsburgh Steeler guy here with his family. So she grabbed me out of the room. It was kind of late at night. She grabbed me out of the room. She says, Dad, I want to take a picture with him. He's out there taking pictures. So I had to run down there and take a picture with Troy Palomalu and Carly. So I wonder if she remembers that. But, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, for Camp Quality, you know, they, I'm sure, are a nonprofit organization and, you know, they run on donations and volunteers and, um, I know they even put out like an Amazon wish list. Um, so I'm going to put their link and um, some information in the community page on our YouTube channel. So if anybody's ever interested, this is such a great cause to give to. So Yeah, and tell them uh, Typically Unique sent you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, no, I think, I think that's something that, you know, if you have the means and if you're you know, could use this service, you know, or had friends that could use this service, or this is just, you know, something that you think is for the greater good, you know, of our fellow human beings, you know, please, please give, you know, if you can, you know, great. Um, But, you know, our kids got to take advantage of it eight and twice. I think Carly Carly went three times because the time, the middle time in between was you know, after Aiden's bone marrow transplant and he couldn't go that year. So she got to really take advantage of it. Right. Had a good time. So that's camp quality. And we wanted to shine that light on it. It's a very special place. And we're going to continue um, telling our story um, about the bone marrow transplant process on our next episode. So we hope you join, you'll join us back for that. And we'll see you next time. See you at episode 30. Bye. Bye.